I have a main on RuneScape, but it stinks. So I locked myself to Sarah Domain for 24 hours straight. Our goal is to make as much money as possible from each God Wars boss to eventually try Nex as the final challenge. Bandos gave us 84 mil GP profit, so after selling my code I want, I used the extra money to upgrade to Sarite Vambraces. I also tried Venonitis off stream and got a gem at uh, 5kc, and with the extra 50 mil I bought Pications. This is now our gear, this is the inventory, and these are the stats. This is our next wish list, and we're just about able to afford the Sarite crossbow so far. I'm going to do the energy efficient solo Ceradomin by GE challenge, which is why I only bring one stamina potion. Really simple concept, shoot from the red tiles and walk on the yellow tiles. This lets you attack every fourth tick and is a whole lot more efficient than running edge to edge. Compared to Bandos, Ceradomin is a lot more forgiving, you can mess up and get back into rotation easily, and taking a hit from Celiana is not that punishing. Before this I also went and did Kingdom Divided to unlock Thralls. By the way, remember how I got the uh, 1 in 5600 Dragon Spirit Bandos? Mm, yeah, about that. Celiana drops 4 uniques, 2 of which we are going to be looking for, both sitting at a 1 in 508. First we have the Saradomin Hilt, clocking in at 19 mil GP. This item was once extremely lucrative, peaking at 52 million in 2017, but has lost a lot of favor in recent years due to health and prey restoration items being more commonplace. But on the other side of the coin we have the Armadil Crossbow, worth 40 mil GP, which recently saw a bump in price due to being a component used to make the Sarite Crossbow. All in all, at 20 kills per hour the wiki assumes an hourly profit of 2.5 mil at Ciliana. This is indeed considerably lower than Bandos, thanks to the key items being more rare and fewer. On top of this, the minions do not have a chance to drop any of the valuable uniques, which although minor, does impact the profit slightly. With the hit to profit in mind, Ceradomin is still quite an enjoyable boss and I do recommend trying it out. It's not extremely intensive, but there's enough going on to not lose interest, because everything this boss is about is balancing resources. You want to stay in this room as long as possible, if anything that's the only thing that will make a difference in your kills per hour. You have little agency over your DPS output, as long as you attack on the red tiles, there is nothing else you can do. What it comes down to is how efficient you are at flicking minions to save HP, flicking prayers to save prayer, walk where you can to save run energy, and managing your inventory to carry as many supplies as possible. All these small things add up a huge amount in the grand scheme of things, because if any one of your resources run out, say you have no run energy, maybe you run out of food, etc., your trip just ends. So striking that perfect balance is super important. Which is sad because it's like the- Whoa wee! Whoa wow! Wow wow wow! I was sitting at 18 kills per hour during the stream, which means that technically I won't hit the drop rate for either item, so getting the help this early into the stream felt like a good omen. Now you may think 18 kills per hour sounds kinda low, while in the actual room I averaged like 22 per hour, but the big problem was kill count. Ceradomin kill count is a bit of an issue. Compared to Bandos at which you can just kill level 13 goblins and get the case in a matter of minutes, your average Ceradomin guy is above level 100, which means getting KC took me about 15 minutes. Now there are of course ways around this. You can pre-farm ecumenical keys, you can actually bank at Nex since getting Saros KC is super quick, or you could have an alt or a friend outside to supply drop every 10 kills. I did uh, none of these. I don't have the ancient prison key unlocked since I'm only on my second God Wars boss, I don't have any ecumenical keys and I don't have an alt that can enter God Wars. I don't even have 83 slayer to kill spiritual mages. I'm at level 75, as I said, account sucks. But do any of these and your banking time should reduce drastically, which makes it a whole lot less punishing to suddenly run out of supplies or in some cases when you plank. No. Oh, planked. Like in free to play. Whoa, 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 whee! Getting both valuable uniques this early was a relief to say the least. I could now safely say that no matter what, it was 24 hours well spent. And anything after this was just an added bonus. If I were to quit now, my GP per hour would be ridiculous. But just because I got a bit lucky doesn't mean the challenge is over. What's uh, where's my HP again? No! 
On this, Runelight as usual saves the day. Traditionally, you had to right-click attack the boss because Starlight is right on top of her. But with the menu swapper, you can just remove the attack option from Starlight, letting you left-click the boss. But I actually found it way harder and unreliable to juggle items on this boss compared to Bandos. Even though the fight itself is more forgiving, the kill times can vary a lot and most importantly, the minions take longer to kill. Because I no longer use Ancients, I had to rely on Bones to Peaches after basically every kill to sustain me, which also added to the prep time, making it harder to juggle. There is a strategy to Venom the minions, and while this would be nice for some added prep time, it does just make your kills slower. Since I did not go over time on the minions a single time, I found it better to just ignore the Venom and go straight for the boss. I had actually never done this boss until I started this grind. With Banos I had some practice with the method on leagues, but aside from a quick test run before the stream started, this was new content for me. Considering that, I think it went pretty well. We were now past the halfway point, the first half being incredibly lucrative so far, but could the second half keep up? Whoa, 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 hey buddy, hello man. Nice to meet you. My name is Jump. I'm now officially lucky. Well, it wasn't another crossbow, okay? I'm still happy with what we have so far. 84 mil in the loot tab, and we still got 11 hours left to go. Compared to the previous stream, I was actually a lot more awake the whole time during this grind. There wasn't a really single point where I felt tired. I'm not sure if that's thanks to the extra energy drink I had, or if I was just better at keeping up with food. But the later hours can get a bit tedious, especially with no drops. So hey, make sure you uh, subscribe and check out the stream here on YouTube. Make it less boring, thanks. Unfortunately, in the remaining 11 hours, not much happened. But I knew no matter what, this endeavor had been successful. I hit the drop table three times, and even if I get nothing in the time left, we're still walking away rich. But that was until the last kill happened. Yep, this is the one. I'm so happy that I'm gonna get the armadillo crossbow on this kill such good times we've had in these 24 hours and to round it off with an acb with an acb Yeah, never mind. Now it was time to sell everything off, but unfortunately, during this stream, the old school runescape market kinda crashed. The Armadil crossbow went down 3 mil in value. Nevertheless, when everything was sold off, I had 76 mil in my inventory, which is quite a bit less than the 88 mil in the loot tab, but this was due to the prices crashing, as well as not being able to pick up much of the stray loot. Supplies cost me around 9 mil, giving us a profit of 67 mil. This puts us at an hourly profit of 2.8 mil, or a bit more considering I took a few food breaks, so not all the time was spent at Sarah. 425 kills means 158k profit per kill, and if we add the 67 mil with the 50 mil we got from Venonitis, it means our next wishlist now looks like this, making good progress. 